Welcome back in to Death Valley Live, the halftime edition. Mark Childress here with Daja Davidson. The Tigers coming up on the short end of the stick so far. Boston College on top in this ball game, 28 to 13. Not what we expected to see so far, Daja. There's still 30 minutes of football left. Yeah, you know, this game is not over. And we talked about the adjustments that were going to have to be made, the chemistry that was going to have to be established, especially on the offensive side of the football. And I think we've seen that a couple times. We've seen some nice, um, you know, movement of the ball happening on that side. I think the defense has got to come back in the second half of this football game and really step it up to put a stop to this Boston College team. It was a crazy start to the ball game. Boston College went right down and scored. Clemson went right down and scored. Boston College went right back down and scored. And then in the second quarter, really the difference in this ball game is the 97-yard fumble return. I don't know if it was a mishandled snap from uh, or uh, exchange between DJ and uh, Travis Etienne, but the ball scored it out, scooped up by Boston College, taken all the way to the house on the other end of the field. That really changed the entire outlook of this football game. A couple of costly mistakes from Clemson late in the half as well, including jumping off sides on that uh, field goal attempt. That would have been a three-point attempt that Boston College then turned around and got seven off of. That's why the Tigers are now down 28-13. to 13. Now, I think it was important to get that late field goal. It was a three-score game going into halftime. Now the Tigers are just down two scores, and they get the ball back to start the second half. And no question that we still have an opportunity to sit, like you just said, we're getting the ball coming back at the half, to talk about what they've seen, right, to pull this back up and say, hey, let's take a look. Of course, number one, I think, is going to be eliminating the little mistakes, like jumping off sides. We can't have those things continuing right. to happen because those things add up and then you give them great field position and then you're back in trouble again. So those are fixes that I won't call them easy, but we shouldn't be making those at this point in the season and especially in a game like this where they have taken over this first half, no question. So a lot of adjustments that have to be made coming back, and and I really think if we can do that, we still have a great chance, as you said, a lot of football left to be played to turn this back around and put this on the Tiger side. And the offense, really, they just stopped themselves on that 97-yard fumble yeah. return, right? They've moved the ball pretty well today. They cannot settle for three points in the second half. You're going to need to see them get into the end zone some more. And the Tiger defense is going to have to find a way to stop Boston College. Again, a lot of football left. We talked about adversity in the Death Valley Live pregame edition. We've seen that in spades today so far. So how are the Tigers going to respond to that in the locker room? You know, and I have been impressed with DJU. You know, I think that he has stepped into this role and, and he's starting to figure it out. We've seen some really good looks and really good plays. Yeah, there have been some high balls and, you know, a little short balls, whatever, but it's going to take that for him to find that rhythm and to find those people on the field that he can trust and get the ball to. Again, it's about eliminating mistakes, I think, when we come back from the half. Another thing that it appears, right, we're speculating yep. here, but DJ did bang his shoulder up against Miami, and if you remember, sat out the week after that. DJ Uyunglele has not run the ball one time yet today, mm -hmm. including a couple of times where you feel like that would have been the call, like down there on the goal line might have been a good chance. I'm wondering if that shoulder is still banged up for him because he almost seems to be on a no-run policy, so that's one less weapon that the Tigers have for the second half. Yeah, very much true. But again, there were some really good moments that we yep. saw. Let's take a look right now. Exciting first half, the top three plays from the first half from our very own Don Munson. 11 one to go here, first quarter of play. BC crowding the line of scrimmage. Coming on a blitz, they'll dump it out. Etienne right side, hands it to the numbers. He goes 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Travis Etienne. Uyengalele takes the snap. Nope, just a three-man rush. Uyengalele pumps once, now throws across. No, first down across the 50 to Amari Rogers. At the Boston College, 39. Uyengalele takes the shotgun snap, play action, wants to throw, looks, throws, and has it complete across the 25 as Powell has to make the catch. Yeah, I feel like a pretty good half from DJ Uyengalele, and you saw some great moments there. The best one of all, man, on that first touchdown to Travis Etienne, you've got the blitz coming in and crashing from that side. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to throw into that blitz. He did that exactly for the touchdown. Absolutely. Well, let's send it back now to Memorial Stadium. We're going to uh, send it back to the band for a halftime performance.
Always great to peek in on the band at halftime here on Death Valley Live. Do want to talk about our autograph football winner. Again, you heard us mention an opportunity to win an autograph Nike football. You do this in the pregame version of Death Valley Live. You hashtag Death Valley Live on Twitter, and that's how you get signed up for it. Congratulations to Jill Rogers, a Clemson Athletic Marketing representative, is going to be in touch with you soon. Congratulations, Jill. Thanks for hashtagging Death Valley Live. Absolutely. Well, fans, it's now time to take a look back at our hero of the game. This is presented in the first quarter, and in light of COVID-19, they are unable to attend the game. But instead, we stream them live into Death Valley. Fans, give a warm welcome to Colonel David Fisher. Colonel David Fisher is the Director of Theater Sec Security Cooperation, United States Air Air Force Central Command, Shaw Air Force Base. Colonel Fisher received his commission through the Reserve Officer Training Corps program at Clemson University. He is an air battle manager with over 2,700 flying hours. He leads security cooperation efforts in support of the U.S. Central Command's theater campaign plan aimed at building partnerships across the Middle East. He has earned the Defense Meritus Service Medal, Air Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, and many other medals. With over 25 years of service, Ladies and gentlemen, it was our virtual hero of the game, Colonel David B. Fisher. Now, earlier in the week, Colonel Fisher received a spe special package from Operation Hattrick to grab some of your very own OHT gear. Visit ClemsonTigers.com backslash OHT. Well, folks, we're going to take you around the ACC. Of course, when you have an early game, there's so many games that are left to be played. But right now, we do have Wake taking on Syracuse. It's halftime right now. Wake leading that 17-7. to Of course, the Charlotte 49ers are going to take on Duke at 7. Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, 3.30. UNC and Virginia going to kick off at 8 p.m. And then, of course, Virginia Tech, Louisville, kick off at 4 p.m. Notre Dame, of course, will be Clemson's opponent next week. Tigers hoping to find a way to escape today with the victory to remain undefeated before they go on the road up to South Bend to take on what looks like to be a very difficult task with that Notre Dame team. Uh, some statistics from the first half. Again, they don't look all that bad. If you were to take a look at the stat sheet only, you would feel like the game was closer than it is. You know, Clemson winning the passing yards battle, 222 to 161. Just 17 yards rushing for the Tigers, which really tells the story. Boston College has been loading the box. Clemson has not been able to establish the run yet. On third downs, uh, Clemson 6 of 10, Boston College 4 of 6. The big one costly turnover for the Tigers. Tigers winning the possession battle, winning the first downs, and uh, it's about even on the penalty side. Although there was one big penalty that was a little bit controversial. It was yeah. on the, the uh, Nolan Turner interception off mm -hmm. the deflected uh, pass where... I don't want to say it was questionable, but I've seen a lot more called uh, for that in the past. So kind <laughs> yeah. of one of those controversial moments. But again, you can't. I'm not blaming that. I'm not, you know, casting aspersions or anything like that. But you've got to get past those bad breaks. And, and let's chalk that up to some bad breaks to go along with Clemson shooting themselves in the foot a couple of times. And that really, that and the 97-yard fumble return, that's the difference in this game so far. Yeah, and that was one of my keys of the game, which is coming up right now, where I talked about that in uh, in the pregame, where I said, you've got to control the momentum shifts and things like that big fumble there yeah. caused a huge momentum shift in the game, not only in the atmosphere, but in the, the outcome, a potential outcome of what this game could look like. So I think coming back in the second half, Half, we've got to control that. You cannot make those mistakes that allow the big Mo to get on and stay on Boston College's side of the football team. I mean, we just can't make that happen. We can't allow that to happen in the second half. Now, the big key is Clemson's getting the ball first, right? So I think the first five minutes, and Clemson usually does a really good job of winning the last four minutes of the first half and winning the first four minutes of the second half. Boston College got the late TD. Clemson did get back with that very important field goal right before halftime. Can they go down the field and get a touchdown to start the third quarter? If they do, it's game on. It suddenly mm -hmm. is a one-possession mm -hmm. ball game. Our defense can make some adjustments. There's a lot of football left, and Clemson can absolutely win this football game. They've got to start to really tighten up on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. So protecting the ball, I think, is absolutely key. Controlling that momentum and which way it shifts, trying to keep it on the Clemson side of this entire game. Um, and then I think settling down. I really think that when you know we get in this, this space of adversity here, you've got to figure out how you're going to step up to the plate and win this football game. I think these guys will come back with some major adjustments that will turn this around for the Tigers. Well, fans, 
Keep watching. Tune into ABC and the Clemson Tigers Network for the second half of what should be an exciting game. We'll see you November 28th as Clemson takes on Pitt.